Christy Burchett, parent. Donald Booty, superintendent, central. And Peter Atwood, also a parent. Oh, welcome, everybody. Um, can you guys can we wait for her? Yeah. Uh, Should we wait for her? Yeah. Uh, Should we Motion to accept the agenda. Council meeting, 
I do not have voting rights since the Board of Health and Director Joe Murray rewrote the CC bylaws, taking my voting rights away. At no time did I motion any agenda item and uh, take recording of the CEC meeting on 9-6-2011. Even states this, as I am stating, as always, that Joan has taken my voting rights away and I can't motion any agenda item. During the meeting on 1-10-2012, the agenda item was approved. The CEC 9-6-11 meeting minutes were tabled by Kum Kum and second by Marcel Soriano and were to be corrected. My name, Marie Mendoza, was to be delineated as a person that motioned the agenda item on 9611 and the approval of the 9611 agenda. <coughs> the agenda. At no time did I motion anything and it was clearly heard on the tape recording that I retrieved from the Luis Alpha. <coughs> I never motioned any agenda item at the 96 2011 CEC meeting. The minutes from the CEC meeting of 9-6-2011 need to be corrected and should not be approved at this time until they, they are corrected. <coughs> now, I always take record my, my, um, the CEC meeting and my son went ahead and I, he recorded it on these two CDs. Yeah. Anybody's welcome to hear it? Do we, it was my understanding that we didn't know who made that motion, that we thought it was her, it was written that it was her, but then she said it wasn't. And then I think from Christie's recording, it just was someone over there, right? So we still don't know who made that motion. So, I, well, obviously we can't approve it if it's not correct, just like she said. But does it matter? Can we just say a motion was made and unknown? I know at other meetings, but you know, these are other meetings per the Roberts Rule of Law. Sure. They say uh, motion to amend the minutes okay. to to state that we don't we don't know who did the motion. That's fine. If that, yeah. And I just yeah. have a copy of it with what I printed up as it was, and it, you could see if it'll listen on this because I did it from my computer. But what this had said, it yeah. said, I would like this was long stated. I would like to say that the agenda be amended so B and C is at the bottom, so you guys will have more time with D, E, and F. And then there was a pause in the background and conversation. And the conversation is from the Spanish interpreter that was there that time. Right. Uh, so you can hear her kind of mumbling in the background. Uh -huh. And then Martina goes and says, I second it. And then there were comments that were unrecognizable in the uh, audio. If you listen to and these then, CDs, Karen, it, it wasn't me. It wasn't Mo. We can say this because Mo doesn't have any for uh, my. She suggested it to you guys. She did. Well, maybe it was a suggestion and someone took it as a motion and someone said, okay, I seconded it. Maybe it was just an error. Yeah, but does it matter? Exactly. Yes. No, you could just go on yes, it does. and motion to amend it, does. it okay. to where we don't know who, who motioned it and who seconded it. Yeah. And that, and so is, it a permanent, is it a permanent placement of those two items? It was just for that meeting. Yeah, it, it was just for that meeting. Yeah, so so whoever wants to do the motion and whoever wants to second, that's fine. We we do it at the union hall all the time. Okay. You know, it's like to get to move forward yes, with the meeting. We need to move forward. Yeah. Right. Okay. So someone makes a motion and someone seconds. I would like to make a motion to change, to amend, to amend the minutes from 9-6-2011 to state a motion was made by an unknown source mm -hmm. with regards to public comment and the self-administrator report being moved to the end of the meeting.
have a handout thank you <laughs> or two <laughs> just in case um, I have been present Jennifer Baker from Al Paloma has been absent a couple times uh, Nancy has had some excused absences and some presence, and Sylvia excused absence, free presence. Edith has, I don't know what an S means with an asterisk. She started to start out. That's where you started, thank you. Edith, and you've been present, 100%, 100% participation. Thank you for that. Kum Kum, you've been here each and every meeting. Um, Marcel. Has an excused absence for today. Does have an excuse for teaching, and right. And um, Mo was asking, Martina, you've been present. Thank you. Excused absence for today. We all agree that that's okay. Good. Excused for that. Rose, you've been present. And Marla, uh, just started. Marla did send an email, which I sent to you when I received it. Okay. Oh, it might have been a thing around. Yeah, she was sick, so let's see. Excused absence. Yeah. Excused absence. Yeah. That was um, November 15th. There was a presentation and you weren't allowed as speakers. I was there. I got there late. But I saw you there. Yeah, so I was there. What do we have you as? Uh, Not there. I'm going to put a foot of feet under there. Okay. I do remember seeing you there. Yeah, I know. I got there like my phone had a copy of the phone and they did show up. Um, Marcel was not there for that, right? No. Sylvia, did you come to that? Did you recall it was the inclusion? There was a panel of people speaking. I tried to get to each one. Yeah. I just kind of remember seeing that. Maybe I'll make it. Right, because that was all about the meeting. It was a meeting like this, so it's probably just going to get on. Yeah. I think I remember seeing it there. there. It was downstairs. Yeah, I was down there. Yeah, I remember seeing them too. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now the 110 column, is that the reason why it's all white? I think that date was there because that's when Marla was voted in, perhaps? And that's the minutes because that might have been. I tried to, well, I just tried to put all of the presentations in the agenda that I just last in the past. Okay. And that is January the That's mm -hmm. this is this agenda. That's this agenda. And we just have that on the, uh, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. But we need not tell the one. Uh, no, we, we had it. it. Was, oh. That we approved at that meeting. Mm -hmm. No. Only absent. Nancy. Yes. Um, I just wanted to, to bring it to your guys' attention today that um, I have requested the past couple of years, and this one including, uh, for Educate Advocate to be a part of Life After High School, to be one of the, the vendors out there. And I had sent a request to the chair of the CAC, since this is a CAC presentation. And um, <clears throat> um, it was, I know it was forwarded on to the SELPA. And I, I followed up again today because I hadn't heard anything back. And um, basically was told by the SELPA administrator that we were not invited <laughs> to come and um, that we don't serve um, young people, young adults transitioning, which is not true. Um, some of the, the providers that you had out there today, for instance, task, they, they said in their, in their little, little green pamphlet that went out today, you know, that they serve parents and children. Team of Advocates for Special Kids is what their name is. 
um, Pomona Valley Learning Disability Association. They say in the green pamphlet they provide parent support. Um, <clears throat> those were some of the reasons given as to why Educate Advocate wasn't, was excluded. And, you know, if this truly is going to be a CAC event that you guys are putting on, that you guys are responsible for, um, I think that you should know that the SELPA is excluding certain groups. I mean, this is supposed to be the Community Advisory Committee, and these were community agencies represented, and there was exclusion here tonight. Um, this also extended to the art and writing, which is something that the CAC is responsible for. It's another CAC presentation. Um, when I had asked that non-public schools that are vendored with the SELPA be sent packets, uh, and then an extension because they weren't giving they weren't getting the packets. I, I, I didn't get a response and then the response that I did get uh, was <coughs> that um, they, they got the packets well and they, and they wouldn't extend the deadline. So you know the thing is to me is if if the SELPA is going to really be the entity behind these events and not the CAC then it might be best to just give authority for these events over to the SELPA because they're truly not CAC events. If the chair, who you know, I'm reaching out to to get some help on these issues, doesn't have any authority to, you know, to assist any community agencies coming and requesting to be a part of these events or trying to get any answers as far as the art and writing contest, um, the, the children that are in non-public schools are SELPA children as well. So they deserve to be part of this. Um, so I, I just wanted to bring those those things to your attention this evening. Thank you. Yeah, and I'd like to add to that. I think it's, it's not um, it's not a, it's not supposed to be a something like that. Um, I guess we ought to just be clear on what the story is. If it is a CAC event, which I understand it sure is, then what? Where does the I get the authority to veto um, uh, who's allowed to uh, come and present. There maybe there is such authority, but we ought to know what it is. Uh, somebody ought to make that clear. Just is it just sort of an arbitrary, capricious thing that the self can do just because it's their building or something like that, or is there some sort of policy or statutory or regulatory authority for the self to say they, they, they can veto whoever the CAC? Have the presentation. I just sort of like to know that. <coughs> and I also would like to make a comment on what um, Christy, Christy, sorry, <laughs> okay. had, had just brought to your attention because I've been coming to these for many years and it seems like it's the same people, the same. There's no other outside entities, there's no other community, there's no, you know, private agency, so to say, with methodologies or, you know, nothing new except the same thing. And, you know, the world is always revolving about new and improved things. And there's always new things happening, new technology or new um, agencies or new community. I don't see them. This, this event should be humongous. There is so much community outreach out there if we would let them in and not have this, so to say, dictated by just, oh, we're just going to allow this group or that group. There's so many other outside entities that would be so beneficial for our children if we would allow them all to come in here and have, make this a big event, not just pick and choose event. Thank you. Um, that's so funny. Um, I wanted to bring forward a uh, four-year review, the uh, SELPA fee-for-service rate. Uh, this year, our fee-for-service is only for uh, behavior specialists. Uh, clinical counseling uh, is assumed under the mental health uh, allocation plan. So uh, the rate for behavior specialist services is 3647 and this has been the same rate as it has been since 2008-9. Are there any questions about that? We only have about five, six kids who have these services on their IEP. Um, 
students kind of grew out of a time when uh, the Salt Lake used to do more direct services to students with autism. So these services are provided um, by either the program specialist or the behavior specialist. I'll wait for the after C2. Okay. <coughs> and then um, the other rate that the SOMA establishes is the rate for the XPOT. And the XPOT is a risk pool to which all of the districts um, put money into based on their average daily attendance. And these funds are used to help offset 30% of the cost of non-public school and non-public agency services, as well as um, subparent reimbursements and uh, legal costs uh, due to settlements coming out of alternative dispute resolution, mediation, uh, or other settle uh, or settlements through uh, the hearing process. And so. Um, Looking at um, the rates uh, that we, you know, the costs that we have projected for non-public schools and non-public agencies, um, we are suggesting, recommending a rate of $27.50 per ADA, um, and that is uh, $1.50 less than last year. And um, we're recommending funding this at 90% of the projected cost. What happens with our non-public school and non-public <coughs> agency contracts is uh, if a student does not attend the school or their services, there is no charge. So we're only charged for the day students are in school, the same way schools earn their money, we're only earn money for a day that a child comes to school. So uh, any absences are not charged. And so uh, we project 100% attendance, and you know we're taking into consideration um, that there are absences. And so, um, based on past experience, uh, we're recommending funding it at 90% of the projected cost. So that's a little something different than we've done in the past. Last year was the first year we did that. It's worked out pretty well, and so uh, we're. So again, uh, recommending that. I'm a little confused. I'm sorry. Okay. Because I know uh, you said 30% of non-public schools or agencies. This would change it to how much percent goes to non-public schools? Or the same for the um, the way the expat supports the districts is the same as always. So, okay. um, if a district. Uh, refers a student to non-public school or non-public agency, the district out of their immediate funds pays 70%, and then the expot pays the other 30%. Okay. Now the expot is made up of district money. You know, um, so the 30% of the cost is spread a, kind of across all districts and 70% is directly funded by the district making the referral. Oh, okay. And this would change the percentage? No. This only changes, so what we do, we, you know, we take a look at this year's, we, you know, at this point in time, how many students do we have in non-public school, and project that all of those students would continue for next year, because we don't really know. But we have a long history that we can look at. And usually the percentage of students in non-public schools has remained about the same. Um, I did notice that the cost went up a million dollars this year. Um, so uh, some, of the, you know, some of the costs are uh, higher, but um, the number of students has remained pretty equal. And so we take that projection and figure out, divide it by all of the ADA of all of our districts and figure out how much they would each need to contribute. And so that, <coughs> but what we're saying is we know that we really won't incur 100% of that cost because that doesn't factor in absences. Mm -hmm. And so if we factor in absences, it's a more realistic cost projection. And at this moment in time, uh, the state has not been paying the districts what they owe them, 
I mean, besides the fact that they're not getting um, all of the amount of money they've been owed, that their revenue limit has been severely decreased. On top of that, the state is deferring payments. So there's a cash problem in just, you know, for most districts. And so this way, why should they pay the SELPA to hold their money when we really know we're going to get it back at the end of the year? So, um, you know, so last year, the superintendent's council looked at the issue of whether or not they should fund the XPOT based on 100% of the projected costs or if 90% would be um, a better projection. Because I attended that superintendent's council meeting, and correct me if I'm wrong, wasn't it 100% of that money, wasn't it going to go into litigation? And not, and the 30% was not going to go for non public schools or agencies? No, the XPOP funds a number of things, and one um, one of the expenses, you're correct, is also legal costs for districts resulting from due process complaints. And um, the settlement costs are funded 70-30, uh, so again, the district pays 70% of the cost, and um, the uh, XPOP pays 30%, and the cost for the attorneys for, uh, to represent the districts is paid 100%. So that's the component that's paid 100%. Okay. Attorney fees paid to parents is also split 70-30. So I think the only thing in the expat that paid 100% is um, the attorney fees to represent the districts. Who pays for that? The expat. Yes, um, <clears throat> on the original agenda that was submitted for this meeting, there was a C2 sheet that just like the C1 sheet, maybe you guys have it, but we don't have it in our, in our packets here for the public. Um, on the C1, it has a breakdown of the years, you know, what, what, how the pay, pay has gone. And it was the same for C2 um, in the packet that was, you know, that you guys were sent out, but not today's packet, unless you guys have something that shows a breakdown for uh, those fees. Um, but I guess my only question about that uh, was that the fee rate stays the same for the behavioral analyst, a analyst, but yet on C2, it goes down, I guess, from the XPOT <clears throat> for the NPA and the NPS agencies. No, it's not, it's not a blank. It, it would sit on the right-hand side in the top C2. I know I saw it because um, that was something that I had jotted down to take notes. I took notes on about. And it was a breakdown over the years of, of that particular rate that had gone, and it was showing it was going down this year. <laughs> the yeah, that's C2. Wait, do you have C2? This is going down in... It started at six thousand three one B, and now it's three thousand C one A. Yeah, we don't have C one A. We only have C one B. No, we don't have that. We only have C one no. B. <laughs> we only have one of them in our packets. I mean. Yeah. We only have C one B. Okay. Do you have C one B? So that that was my only comment to point that out to the CAC. Anyway, that was the gist I was pointing out was that one, it's it's staying the same for the behavior analyst rate, but for the other rate it's going down. So just to point that out and might be something you guys want to just consider discussing, or I'll, I'll definitely bring it up with the superintendent's council, <laughs> either way. Well, I guess I have two things. One of them is just, when you calculate the ADA, is this the ADA on every kid, or just the, the kids with IEPs, or what? 
when you're... ADA is for all students in the district, not just special ed. We okay. use the term um, pupil count. When we use that term, that refers to special ed only. Oh, okay. So, I know those are kind of confusing. <coughs> Well, it's not on the Well, because, I mean, pupil count doesn't let you know that it's a special ed count only. It's not a very descriptive term. Well, I guess I would like to mention, since, since the attorneys are paid 100% from the expat, whereas settlements and so forth are 70-30 and the district pays most of it, I can see how this certainly encourages the districts to fight about everything. Because if they fight, then it gets paid out of the Xbox, which the money is gone anyway. So uh, it might be worth recommending to the superintendent's council that if fighting is undesirable, these numbers ought to be changed. The, the district ought to eat something if they want to fight. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I was going to comment. And that's the other thing, um, I, I agree with what Mr. Atwood had said about 100% attorney fees. I mean, the ex-pot money, instead of fighting legal fees, that could be used for special education children. And that, that money, I mean, there's a, a lot of money that could go into the projects or into um, um, teaching the children instead of just sitting there and just fighting with the, you know, fighting with the parents. You know, take that money, put it to better use than paying attorney fees. And at that, you pay 100%. I mean, that's ridiculous. That money could be put to so much better use, and there's quite a bit there. I and mean, that's what I've been saying all these years. The same thing. Put the money to help the children instead of making attorneys richer. Yeah, I guess I hadn't mentioned that. Nobody's going nobody's to be interested in what we have to say so long as it's only what the kids need and not what the districts need. The districts are going to think about what the district administrations need. That's life. But uh, it ought to be noted that if the district, if each district uh, is getting over by having all their attorney fees paid, nonetheless, all the districts are being ripped off by them being encouraged to, to do this. If the attorneys are getting fed, they're not getting fed by you know, Commander Scott beaming some, some money down to them. Ultimately, the districts are paying for everything. So encouraging districts to fight by uh, paying 100% of their attorney fees is a guarantee that all the districts can even get screwed over by the irresponsible conduct that this encourages because the districts have to pay the X spot. I mean, that's where it comes from. So it would be in the interest of the districts to uh, restructure this in order to make fighting less attractive. And I'm just talking about their budgets right now. I'm not talking about kids. There's a slight fallacy in that. Okay. In that one of the reasons the SELPA has a program manager that um, assists the districts in due process is to allow them uh, not to hire attorneys. And very seldom, you know, if you really look at the um, you know, settlements, especially anything that's resolved in that solution and very often mediation, there is no attorney that represents the district. However, we always pay attorney fees to the parent attorneys. Mm -hmm. Well, the problem with that, I'll give you just one instance, briefly. Uh, this is a wonderful thing where Chino agreed that they owed the, mom, the woman the check. I mean, they agreed to pay for an IE, and they agreed, even in their pleading, they agreed, yes, we do owe the money. But they wanted to fight about it anyway. And uh, Jonathan Reed, I know, got involved in writing that up. And somebody paid Jonathan Reed for the district to litigate, saying, yes, we owe the money to check, but we, we, you know, we owe the, but even though we owe the money, and we're not disputing that, we want to move to dismiss, and we want to say that the thing is insufficient anyway. It was unbelievable. I don't think it was more than $500, probably, that was involved. But the, the district wanted to litigate about literally nothing. There wasn't any dispute about the money. They said, oh, well, we want it dismissed because the idea doesn't say, you know, it doesn't give any particular time that you have to pay. I mean, they're trying to take the position that, well, you know, they can pay whenever they feel like it, maybe two, three years down the road. Yeah, it made my head spin. So my point is that the, and it was Amy Foody, by the way, that sent the letter. It went out over her signature, even though, uh, it was obvious that Jonathan had written the letter, 
So my point is that the fact that you have a due process manager to screen these things doesn't mean anything because a due process manager will back up the most preposterous fighting over nothing. The fact is if the districts are being paid 100% uh, to, for lawyering and they're only paying 30% to settle up, you're asking them to fight. And Amy doesn't do a thing to stop that from happening. So it would be in the interest of the districts and their budgets and everything to restructure things so that it's not, they're not encouraged to fight. Because I'm old and I'm tired. I don't want to fight any more than I have to, even though I fight every day. Have you, have you taken this up to the Chino Board? I mean, I think that... Well, no, because this is the first that I heard of it. It's unbelievable. Well, maybe I think it's going to be better taken up at the, at the, at the board. Because really, I mean, they, should, they should understand it. Oh, if you're talking about the incident that I'm talking about, oh yeah, I told them about that. Right, no, no, I'm talking about, the, you know, I, this actually, actually I, would, I would suggest for all of us maybe not to take names because, you know, this is uh, not to get personal, use due process manager, if, if you would, I'm not, you know, you, you Well, the due process manager we all know is Amy Pudi. I know, not, I know, no, but just, just for... It's nothing for, personal. This is not in her personal... Uh, in her personal you, capacity, this is in her right, official you capacity. Know, I, I understand, Peter, but I think it's just, you know, I'm just saying this for myself. I, I just feel because then it's like, you know, if we all take, start taking names and it, if we don't know where it is. So, yeah, I, I, that's just me. Anyway, the incident in question, I did bring it to the board and, and stuff, just as an example of the I, I amazing stuff it, that they fight about. But I, what I didn't yes, know Peter, that. Peter, maybe I think, yeah, because this is, this is an ongoing thing. I, I don't think, you know, this, this expat has been going on for several years. So maybe I think we all should go to our boards and, and see. This is the first but I learned of this, that they're actually being encouraged to litigate in that particular way. That's I'm, I'm a little confused about, didn't you say that really overall it's the district's money? Yes, anyway. it is. Yes, I mean the districts all contribute this money towards the x Right. And so it's, a, it's kind of like a risk pool, like insurance. Right. Right. You pay, you know, you put money into the insurance company, right. and some years you may have an accident and you get something out of it, other years you don't, but the year you do get something, I mean, especially because we have some very small districts, right. you know, they don't have a lot of excess in their budgets, right. you know, even in a good year. So to me, I'm, I'm just missing a point that it's encouraging the districts to fight, because it sounds like it's money coming from them anyway. Right. I, it is I'm just, personally confused. It is just like insurance. Okay. When everybody ultimately pays, if everybody is, is insured for everything, uh, it is true that everybody gets punished because everybody pays. But each individual on each particular case gets over. And, and that's what happens here. The expat is in fact an insurance situation. So that each 100% payment for lawyers encourages this district or that district or the other one to fight over the most stupid things because they don't actually have to pay for it as coming out of the expat. Although you're perfectly right that the districts, the districts as a whole are absolutely paying for it. Right. So it's a very perverse incentive here. Exactly. And it depends how many students each district has. Like, you know, the district has This is unreal. Yeah. So what happens to the money at the end of the year if it's not spent? Carries over? Mm -hmm. um, Yes, if there is money left over, there's a certain level of reserve that's always kept in the expot, um, and uh, any uh, unspent money would go back to the district. Redistribute it the same way it came in? It's the same way it comes in. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, also, um, you also have to remember that that expot money, it's the ADA money, which is actually our tax paying money. Yeah. So we're paying that's into this pot for them to fight us parents with our money if you really look at it from a logical point of view. So they take so much per student, which is the taxpayer's money, they put it in this X pot, then they take the money, pay the lawyers to fight the parents whose taxpaying money is paying for that and not getting services for their children. And attorneys love that. Because yes. Because even both if sides, both parents and attorneys do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, 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 it's true. So it works, and that's it. why I've always encouraged me you know, I, I took a business law class. The attorney there recommended Pepperdine University. I mean, he got people to settle, you know, instead of going through this multi-million dollar litigation sometimes. <coughs> I'm not done yet. Sorry. That's Sorry. okay. And then the other Sorry. thing is I would like to piggyback on what um, Peter was saying earlier about 
it's everybody's right, basically, in public input. If he wants to na name a person, I think it's only right that the public makes you aware, since you are the liaisons to us parents, of our concerns for each individual. That's all I have to say on that. Make, give me some advice on this matter. I'm not gonna I know, but I'm just case. saying that that's, that's what you should said. take our concerns. I, I, that's what I said. It was a suggestion, and you know, I mean, it, you should, all I'm saying I'll is that. Well, it's not this time. <laughs> I need to finish. Go all ahead. I'm saying is when we bring something to the table, that you, as the CAC members of the community, should listen to what we have to say because we are concerned. I'm saying with any parent who comes, not just us, because. The parents will reach out to you, and you're supposed to be helping the parents. Thank you. This is the, the backup of how the projection was made. Okay. So what you see um, is uh, you know, the um, on the revenue side what we receive as reimbursements from the district, which was 70%. Um, the Apex spot also pays for the SACE. CSDR is California School uh, for the Deaf Riverside. And so 100% uh, of the cost of students going there, uh, their program is paid for out of the X spot. However, uh, the district does pay a certain, um, kind of what it would cost the district to send a student to a county program for the deaf, the transportation cost. Um, and then on the expense side, um, you know, the 1,000s and 2,000s are salary benefits um, and materials, and then the actual contracts in the 5,000s. that was uh, agreed upon last year. And if, you know, if uh, Catalina did calculate that um, if the expat contribution rate was based on 100% of the cost, it would be $30.20, so it would go up slightly. Um, as I said earlier, our non-public school costs have increased, and also our ADA is going down, so, um, this was one of the things we looked at last year because our ADA um, for most of our districts has it have been in a downward trend. So, um, you know, we're collecting less, there's less money being put in, so you'd have to pay at a higher rate to keep the same fund. Any other questions? Oh, excuse me. Um, C1B, um, you indicated that last year was the first year it was factored down by the 90%. Yes. So it was twenty nine twenty nine dollars that was factored down by that ten percent. Yes, I think last year we looked at eighty percent, ninety percent, and a hundred percent as options. And um, you know, they decided to go with the ninety percent. So the twenty seven forty nine does compare to twenty nine dollars, but not necessarily correct the previous rates. Right. And you could have, and as you see, it would have gone up even more last year if it was at 100%. Right. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? several meetings I've heard everybody throwing in their two cents about bringing in an outside agency so I have been a little proactive and if you wouldn't mind I'd like to make a motion to have a representative from a public private agency on the CAC board for a two-year term and to implement a specific format including a timeline to select this member as provided in my handout which I have if you don't mind Is that a 
are you bringing that forward as a motion? As a motion. I'd like to make a motion. motion. Start to the top. Yes. Hold the second. Ask a second. Ask a second. No, you do. Oh, thank you. I make a motion to, and it's on the top. And it's kind of long and wordy, so I put it, printed it out. So you wouldn't have to remember what I said. One more. Like, one more page. talking over the last several meetings about getting somebody on and it's caused a lot of um, upheaval amongst us and so I thought that I think from what I'm hearing everybody's asking for a specific policy to do it and so I put it kind of simply and I'm open to discussions but I was thinking step one contact local agencies create a standard letter to be approved by the board at the main meeting and I put a timeline in there just so we're all kind of held to let's get this done. Let's not let it drag out. Right. So receive input about specific criteria used to be considered for the position. And I think via email. Now I understand we can't have discussions via email, but we can put input according to our Brown Act. We can throw input all into one spot. Here's what we would like to see. And then we can take that information that's compiled to create a letter. So it can be completed in time for that May meeting. So I'd like members and the public to offer suggestions for a list of agencies that would receive this invitation letter and have these letters mailed out by May 18th, which is right after our meeting. So if we have the letter approved, the agencies where people would like that meet the criteria that we've all come up with, we can send letters out. That's my hope. Number two, interviews. So receive letters from agencies with their approved representatives by June 18th. And we should put, I think, a very clear deadline. And that gives them a lot of time. So compile a list of questions to be used during the interview process, again, via email, um, during May and June. This list would be complete prior to the time that the interviews are conducted, of course. So conduct the interviews. Now, I don't know, executive committee or regular during a regular meeting, doesn't matter to me. Um, dates for these interviews to be determined because maybe we have to interview on someone else's schedule and not necessarily our meeting schedule. Okay, step, step three, finalize the candidate. So the CAC members or the executive board member, whatever's decided upon, vote for the candidate to be recommended to the superintendent's council and the time frame would be for their September 11th, on or before September 11th. So they have a meeting right after our meeting on September 11th where they could take our recommendation. Conducting interviews. Mm -hmm. um, is there a standing committee that would be able to do the interviews? You know, and then bring it forward to the rest of the group? That may be an alternate way. I think that um, you, could, it, you could very well violate the Brown Act if you start emailing input and different things. And so it may be that you um, may want to have a subcommittee. Um, or these you know, just maybe no, together you know, because it can only be, you know, you still have to have less than half of the um, total group to have, have a subcommittee. Okay. And um, to create the letter and um, the criteria, and that would get you, you so know, on the way. The interviews, I believe, the bylaws right. say, let me see, is it up? It should be up now. Yeah, you could indicate that the executive committee would do the interviews. And that's still less than half of? Well, uh, you know, the executive committee makes the recommendation anyway, so okay. kind of almost natural to. Right, it's, it's just that in this case, the executive committee and the, it's just really just a few people. Right. Um, you know, so it's almost as if it would be nice to have everybody's input into some of these things, so. Um, and I have no problem with that, it's just getting everybody. Right. I'm yeah. getting everybody. Well, that's, and I feel better, because I'm not in the executive committee, right. and I would love to be part of that. Mm -hmm. That's, that's yeah. what I think. But it's, it's, it's not such a subset, so subset. But I think if there's kind of communication about scheduling in meetings, that can be done in the right. 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 Right.
you can do that on, right. online and I can mention a few days. I can do the few months. It won't be so hard. Yeah, and just my worry is getting everybody here. I that know. is my worry because mm -hmm. in the past, you know, there hasn't been a form. But it is the end of the school year and it's a very busy time with a lot of people, so. But the interviews actually can't be conducted. Some interviews would be after June 18th. They have to be because we wouldn't have it all together. Yeah. Right. But could we all agree that we would maybe present three top days for the interviewee, if you will, the person who wants to be interviewed, mm -hmm. get their top three days, send it out, and the majority, mm -hmm. that's when we go? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. any of us is mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Special yes. circumstances right. to make you an extra one if you can't make it on that day or something. Right. I'm part of another committee, and what they do is they send out a letter. They send a letter of you know questions, and they, the candidate has to answer. Uh, then there's a date that they all come, and the interviews are made five minutes, five minutes, and they just you know go off on what they what the questions were, and and then you get a feel for it, and then you know you tell them. Will be contacting you. The, only, the only thing is, I think I've been in the interview, you're talking about, they don't get the, especially if they don't get the questions, because when they come, right, that's when we give them right. the questions. Right. And we subs, we each one ask. Okay, that's exactly questions. what we want. Yeah, it's, it's, I know that's the standard way that this committee's interviews, you know, our interviews are done. So well, this committee has. Sure, you're not discussing that. Thanks, Peter. 
But Martina, I do have public comment, FYI. I think it might be, and um, you know, you may want to make sure that you know um, there's maybe some specific time for public input rather than interrupting the interviews, just so that you have more, that's a bit more orderly yeah, process. Yeah, you know, better do it in the beginning, and then this way, this we don't want to intimidate them. We don't want to make them uncomfortable. Right. They're coming already, maybe wondering or feeling, you know. So getting that done before we even like started a meeting. So you know. So you would have all the interviewees. Yeah, because it's only like presence presence per, per, per person. Right? Awkward, right? But you know what? I so then you have three or five people and you talk to them and you say, okay, we just have, sorry, the rest well, of you are yeah, out. Well, yeah, because you know that if they're here, they're going to listen to the questions and I'm going to do first and I'm going to ask you that. We kind of, it's hard to answer that this. Oh, yeah, yeah I said we made that sign, but, made but that as far day. as the interview itself, you're saying how everybody to listen do to a it. group interview that's where it's kind of that's awkward. That's yeah. awkward. Well, when a school board appoints, uh, you know the public doesn't get to interview people, but the public gets to be present. But the board members get to interview, and the board members get to ask questions, and it's done different ways. And Chino, they, had, they chose the questions ahead of time, gave you a structured interview, you knew what it was, and you went in there. But other, other boards do different things. The fact is, the board members do the interviewing, and the public gets to watch. That's the way it's done. Okay. And can we do just one at a time, have them wait outside, and one at a time come in? Well, the they public, they can all come in. They have to be here if they want to, but you can ask them to do that out of consideration for the other candidates. Yeah, that's awkward. That will all work, yeah. If they're not used to awkwardness, they don't go on. I have a point there. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I have public comment. Well, first of all, this, I mean, the, it sounds like a, a nice plan. I, I would love to see this instituted actually in the school district level. Um, but the appointment, you know, it doesn't come from the CAC. The appointment comes from the superintendents. 
according to the bylaws. And, you know, sticking to the bylaws, 4.2.3 is a citation. It says, representatives of public, private or public community agencies providing services to individuals with exceptional needs may apply to the executive committee. The executive committee shall recommend, recommend, they don't appoint, just recommend, one representative for consideration of approval by the superintendent's council. So, um, <clears throat> you know, th this issue with this particular person that's been on the agenda, there was two items, uh, two persons, so to speak, on the agenda. One was an email from Opark. They weren't appointing a person in their email. They weren't recommending any person. They were asking to be a part of the CAC, possibly to come to meetings. So I don't necessarily consider that they were asking for any appointment to the CAC. But the other, the other letter in there is asking, requesting that a particular person be appointed to the CAC. Basically for this, the executive committee, to make a recommendation, you know, there was a meeting set up for the executive committee to meet in order to make that recommendation. Um, that was at, at the end of the resource fair and the executive committee refused to open the meeting. But that's what the bylaws currently state, is that the, is that the executive committee makes a, a simple recommendation to the superintendent's council. So, you know, this, this particular person, the letter was sent in in November, it's almost been a whole school year, <laughs> November of 2011. We've been trying to get somebody from the actual community, an actual community member on the CAC, uh, I think since 2009. Um, and then the bylaws were changed in April of 2010, and still, in an effort to try to get somebody on the community, you know, nothing's going forward. I don't have a problem with these steps. Like I say, I, I wish they were instituted at the school district level, so that there were actual interviews for persons getting onto the CAC appointed by the school board. But there's no appointment from the CAC. It's just a recommendation to the superintendent's council. That's it. So that's my point. That's exactly our, uh, is that what you're saying to us? The step three is to, uh, the candidate to be recommended. So, so I guess we, I guess what I've been hearing is that people have been saying we don't have steps for recommending anyone. We don't have a process for recommending someone. If the bylaws say that we recommend someone, we, let's just make the steps so we can do it. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't go on any farther. It's been going on a long time. Right. So um, my question to you guys is, the, executive, the bylaws, this is what it says, that the executive committee uh, shall make a recommendation. But that's not to say that the other members can't, you know, write to, uh, send that sure. generic letter to the agencies you want, and then we're going to have, we're going to interview them, the executive committee. Right. And if you, you know what, we, we can send a letter. You just give us the information of where you want the letter to go as long as they meet the criteria that we're going to put into place of who gets the letter, then we can send it out to everyone. <coughs> everyone. Right. So, the executive committee, can you throw me some dates so we could meet, we could go ahead and maybe write some, uh, you know, write um, some questions, uh, write yes. some yes. information, yes. and then the other members turn in, yeah, turn in your name, your agency, so we'll, so we could mail it out to. Sure. Well, this is what the bylaws say. No, we have this question. Yeah, you can suggest questions. Just for the, oh, yeah. For the okay. that's, yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's just right. the, the way you can email. Right. Via email, you can email them in. Just a question. Yeah. You can email. Yeah. I, I would love to hear this one. You can send in your opinion yeah. and email it. So can right. you? Thank you. Send it in. Yeah. yeah. So your question. But you're saying, okay, I'm sorry, just to make sure that I'm clear. But the interview. Can we, the but we can be present for the interview. It's going to be done in public. Yeah. Right. Okay, yeah. I just wanted to make sure. Yeah. We just the interviews have to be done in public. Yeah. They'll be done in public. So is that a group? Yes. <laughs> now, um, I'm hearing a couple different things yes. because I'm hearing now is it the executive committee that's going to draft the letter? Or are you going to form a subcommittee to bring it back to um, the larger group to to draft the letter and to draft criteria? I believe it's going to be the executive committee. Yeah. It doesn't have to be. I mean, no, it I think it says the executive committee shall recommend one representative, and the applications would come into the executive committees. But there's nothing in there to 
include you know, two or three people together. getting together to get some of the tasks done. And I think one of the things we've experienced is um, time management, being able to have that time to you know, devote to a task. That sounds good to me, or you know, that sounds good to you. If there's some people who say, I have extra time and I am for this, I have this is for the steam. Subcommittee. Yeah. Okay. Stand. Yeah. So, I thought we had one we subcommittee have one that says community. Bylaw person. Anybody? Um, well, there's, there's a subcommittee that says. It was actually written. I read it in your minutes. It's actually in this. Yeah, it's in one of these. Actually, the. the right, right. Right. I don't want to join every subcommittee there. You could, you could appoint a subcommittee just for this task. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we could. Does anybody who that would volunteer to yeah, come in and give us an audience? We would be around. We would be promoting it. Martina, I have a Public Information and Membership Committee, Parent and Community Education Committee. It's under 7.2. You should already have people in those committees. Yeah. Remember we, everybody. I'm reading it actually right here at number three. It says. Um, I think that, yeah, the chair standing committees at the bottom of the um, September 6th minutes. Uh -huh. Standing committee interest number two. Do you have this discussion right Who's in it? Who's on it? Well, I wasn't there. You on. Um, Karen. Yeah. You. Of course, at all. Standing committee interest. Oh, those are just. We can make just another standing committee for this, right? Mm -hmm. No, we cannot. These are the standing committees. These are them. Okay. Information and membership. Would you say that would be? Yeah, that's, that's, that would, that's the one. What is it? And that was your first choice, Sharon, and Marcel's first choice, and my second choice. And Martina, is it your choice too? Yeah. What she was on everything. Oh, no, no, no. She was on everything? I think Mo was too. I have a good memory. So that uh, those, so that you know <coughs> that there's a willingness to make a commitment now. Mm -hmm. right. So yeah. So well, Sharon, I'm, sure. I know Mo will go ahead and accept it. Okay. So Rose. so Rose, do you want to take it, and then we'll ask Marcel not to, because he's not here. He's been a little bit absent he, teaching. He's busy with the school. Yeah. So he he is. The date that he was assigned to teach got changed yes, after yes, sure. he had been appointed, so um, he's had a conflict. Rose, do you want to come? Sure. So Sharon, Rose, Paul, Martin. Okay. And your date will be? That has to be ready by. It has to be ready by the May meeting. May right. May. Yeah. So if and if everybody who wants to um, throw any input, put any input, send it to one of them. You, me, her. So you guys are going to meet. You're going to prepare a standardized letter for it. Yeah. You're going to make a list of the agencies you want this letter to be received from. And at that time, are you developing your questions too? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So that means we need input from everybody. Input now. Don't wait if you want to make inputs on questions, agencies, mm -hmm. letters, stuff, and we'll compile the information and create it. So where should emails go? To our chairman? To Karen. To Karen? No, you send it to, you send it to Karen. Send it to Karen, right? Yeah. And we're going to meet before May 18th. By May 18th, the letters have to be mailed out. Yes. Well, we have a, we want to. We actually have a, the May meeting. Yeah, what day so we that? should have our stuff ready by the May meeting, so people can say, "I like it. I don't like it. Can you please tweak or change this or that?" Right. Then we can tweak this or that 
change it and mail it out by the 18th. So it's like a day before, way before, way. Right, next week. Yeah. Maybe we should meet next week. My house. Oh, it's not public. <laughs> public. <laughs> it is public. The standing committee meeting. Is it? Yes. You guys are coming to my house? Oh, subcommittee. The standing committee. It's a standing committee. It's to pull in membership or CAC. So mm -hmm. they close the doors at 8 here, right? So it has to be before 8. It has to be here for a library. We just have to close the agenda. You do have the uh, you have the ability to set up a subcommittee mm -hmm. to do a, a particular task, and that might be an easier way to go. Um, and it just needs to be less than half of the membership. And uh, no, I was that no was outside the membership. So four people is half is less than half. We have nine. <coughs> Members. And this could be a subcommittee, and this not a standing subcommittee, committee. and we can compile right. and then this. you bring it back at the main meeting for, for approval. approval. That seems that sounds easier. Easier. I mean, it that sounds, sounds easier, but why do we even do the standing committees if we're not going to use them? I mean, come on, let's just, let's just be here before 8 p.m. and uh, close on date. Okay, so is that what you want to do? Yeah, not the 24th, because that's what you guys want to do. Some of you guys are busy. So, so let's just, not the 24th, not the 26th. 26th. But is that what you guys want to do? Can we vote? Can we say yay to the vote, and then I have to go, and then I'll tell you the 26th is good for me? Thursday yeah. night. Is that okay? Can we yeah, ask the building or the room? We'll have to, we'll have to we see know. if you okay. can use the building. Okay. I mean, there are, uh, what day of the week is that? Thursday. 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 Because I know there are some standing um, events. I know Wednesday nights, every Wednesday, it's totally taken. Um, can we, what via email, yeah, can we via email the um, meeting, and we all can just put in the meeting how we want it. But I'm fine with that. We won't talk about what we're going to talk about. We're just going to talk about the meeting, right. which really makes everybody in the room having to throw your input in quick, or we're going to come up with it ourselves. So input what you want. Time would you like to do you want to have it on the 26th, or do you want to do the first week of May? Um, well, do you check the availability of the rooms and then email out to us? Oh, I, tell you. Or, I mean, or you guys could get together at Mimi's over or Starbucks, and I mean, it doesn't have to be here at the cell phone either. I mean, so okay. if there's, you know, but it's I don't know what public. public. Huh? It's public. It's public. So it doesn't have to be, but that's the reason why we have standing committees. I just want to be open. I just want everybody to. Does the facility for someone like this? That's how we're going to try it. And I, I, and I, we could also do it at the library. We could just post the agenda. Yeah, I, mean, I, I, we could do. I mean, I know OMSD has, you know, well, let me borrow a room. Can we um, just can we vote and say yay, and then tomorrow work it out with email mm -hmm. or? I have I have child care issues. I have to pick up a child at eight. So, so you may unless you guys want to keep talking about it. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carried. Aye. 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 I will absolutely be available by email to make up a date. And I'm good on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Okay. And we'll get input from everybody before the delegation reports. Okay. All right, so if we know how many people at a public would like to attend, we can do it at my house. So don't forget members. Yeah. All our community is not going to be about a year.
the the hard writing starts at six six forty five.